All right, welcome back. So I have to admit, I am slightly, I wouldn't say dreading, but not looking forward to the background vocals of this mix. If we take a look at everything, sometimes I'm really, really good when it comes to, you know, laying out my mixes and being structured and organized. And other times, maybe it comes to me and it's a little disorganized or I get individual stems and then I get other elements and things like that. So if we take a look at these backgrounds, the way that these are routed, I remember when we were doing one of the first videos was that we have like basic routing. Let me open up the console for a moment. Let's go to our main track and I'm gonna collapse the folder. I have my fader port set to open and collapse different folders. But if we take a look at these, for example, these are routed all of the background Vox one, and then we have like chants that are routed to background Vox and everything like that. So it is not the way that I usually like to work. Now, if we take a look at what we printed and what we rendered, these are what we rendered as stems. So if I take a look at this, let me actually, let's, let's activate this track. I'm gonna right click or rather enable this track. I'm gonna right click and enable it. And let me solo this out and let's bring it in here. And I also wanna see what's happening in the console. So for that, I'm gonna expand my console view over here. We did copy over any sends and anything where we, where we printed a stem, any stem print, we placed it right beside it. I do that on purpose because my brain hurts if I don't. We do have the send returns, or we do have the effects sends on each one of these. So if I solo this out, let me have a listen to background Vox 1, and I'm going to collapse my mixer so that we can hear things a little bit better. And let's take a listen to how these sound. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. Okay. So we have basically the mix, right? And if I was to solo this one, that should sound identical. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. And also keep in mind that in this case, this went through a lot of different processing. I gotta be honest, I don't want this course to be incredibly long. So what I might consider doing, if I had the time, I would open up this folder and I would map each one of these and, and find a placement and I would decide whether some of them are gonna be on top or on the bottom. In this case though, as, as I'm kind of crunched for time and I wanna keep this moving, I might actually consider using Halo Upmix on this again if I'm being honest. Another thing to point out is when it comes to Halo Upmix that we kind of got to keep our eye on our system resources. And if I go to, where is Halo Upmix? I should be able to find it. Let's see what it's using in terms of if we solo out the percussion. Let's scroll over here, let's solo the percussion. Okay, so that's, you can see this one, this instance of Halo Upmix is sitting at about 10. Our CPU load still seems okay though. Okay. So what I'm going to do is if I need to, I'm not um, I'm not worried about it because if I need to, I know that I can right click and I can transform this to rendered audio and it'll actually render Halo up mix. It'll turn this into the, one of those types of channels. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's just go ahead and do that right now. Might as well be easier to do that. This is just gonna do one continuous file. It might take a little bit to do, but I am on an older system. I'm doing a lot of different things on this video all at the same time. So I'm always concerned with making sure that I'm maximizing my CPU resources. But after this is done, I think what we can do is we can actually use Halo Up Mix on the background vocals so that we have, we maintain the actual A-B comparison between the stereo. It doesn't lose any of its punch. It doesn't lose any of its volume. We're not really changing the mix because Halo Up Mix is so good at retaining everything and making sure that your stereo and your immersive, they both sound very, very similar. Okay, we're almost done over here. I don't have the fastest system, but it's definitely still chugging along and I'm still able to work with it. So we're sticking with this for now. Okay, notice what's gonna happen here is this will now change to a stereo file. If I expand this out and let's do a data zoom. See, everything now has been redirected or redistributed out through all the different channels. So that is a good idea to do. And I just, I just offloaded this processing off my computer. If I want to bring it back, I just transform it back to real time audio. And this will bring me back to where I was before. We didn't lose any of our sends or anything. It just transformed the audio. Okay. So let's go now to our background vocals and I'm going to do the same thing. We're going to go to, let me zoom in a little bit. We're going to go to, first of all, we'll go to background ones, which are right over here. 
and we'll make sure that this track is selected. And I am going to, first of all, uh, load Halo Up Mix. So we'll choose Halo Up Mix like this. Then we need to determine what track format that we want to use. And for that, uh, we have to do that here. I'm going to use 7.1.4. Give this a moment. And we're gonna use the whatever the default preset is. It's a good starting point. I'm gonna turn the LFE off. And now if we press play, we will have a 7.1.4 version and we can toggle between the source and the upmix. Let's start with the source, which will be stereo. Also, I'm gonna keep my eye on my meters here. You'll see that this is stereo. Let's open up the level meter on the main outs. Let's open it up right here. Um, let me move this over just a little bit. So now we are listening to these background vocals, but this will be stereo. You are my uh, let me make sure that I solo this out, though. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. Okay, now, if I toggle to the up mix... You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me... And then we have the exact feature. When we click exact, then it's a perfect up mix and down mix. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. Okay, so there's actually quite a lot of going on in the height speakers. I'm not 100% sure if I like that. So let me take a quick listen on my mains. I'm gonna listen to this with this activated. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. I'm gonna listen to this in context with everything though. You are my sunshine. Another thing that I can do is because we added those VCAs, when I'm trying to make a decision if I like something or not, I can easily toggle back and forth between this two mix and then the Atmos mix. Okay, I like that. I'm okay with that. I might just really quickly see if I want to choose the exact mode on or off. So I'm going to toggle off exact and I'm gonna to listen to this one more time. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. Another thing that I can do is I can actually redistribute. Um, if I go to the IO in this plugin, I can actually redistribute the actual levels that are going to the individual channels. But generally speaking, I think the presets work great. The only thing I might want to consider doing is I don't really need the center. So I think if we make that one adjustment, that'll probably be enough for me to get this sounding the way I want. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. So now we've done Halo Up Mix for that one over here. Now, what else do we have? We have Background Vox uh, 2. I'm going to right click and let me now enable this track as well. And let's take a listen to what's happening on this one. So now we're just soloing just this element. What do we have going on here? Okay, well, we have our plate verbs and we have our room reverb and we have our quarter note delay. These are sharing some of the effects that we had happening with these main ones. So we shouldn't have any issues in terms of if they're sharing anything. And if we duplicated the actual audio and then we reversed the panning, that they were part of those tracks. It, it's going to be in those print tracks as well. That's actually not too bad. What I might consider doing with that is just double clicking and then I might adjust these. Okay, so that sounds good. And I might give them a little bit of elevation too. Now that we have done that move, I want to A, B it against the original ones over here, which is part of the bus, which I, I didn't change the stereo bus. This is why it's so good to actually make prints of things. So if we take a listen to these, this is the stereo panner exactly the way it is. J 
So in this case, I may actually have to bring these down a little bit and that's cool. So let's bring this down and then I'm just making a decision as to what one I'm using. So I'm going to use, in this case, we used Nugent Halo Upmix. So for this, I can actually, I no longer need this. I can disable this track and also I can hide this track. So we have BG Vox one, we used Halo Up Mix. We used it on the actual stereo stem. It went through all the processing that the mix bus had. And then for Vox two, we've just done some basic panning adjustments where I've kind of spread this out. I gave it a little bit of elevation and then we brought the level down a little bit, but we need to hear this in context with the track. Okay, so uh, it sounds good. I just think that this one might be a little bit too loud. And the best way that we can do this is let's get a background Vox over here. Oh, did I actually have this in by accident? I may have. Let me right click and uh, we, got, we need to make sure that we disable this track. Once we're happy with it, we disable it and then we just hide it. We no longer need it at all. Let's go back to the beginning. Okay, now that we have both of these tracks, I'm gonna select both of these. We will right click and you guessed it, we are going to add VCA for selected channels. Now we have our BG Vox bus and I'm gonna call this BG Vox. And let's place the BG Vox after lead Vox. So we have our horns, we have our two mix. Our two mix, um, generally I might give this a different color. So maybe I'm going to color it the same as it is just so I know. Now, I just need to be able to make sure that I'm not straying too far from the stereo. Okay, so it's sounding pretty good to me. All right, that's a lot that we've covered in these two videos. Um, it's a really great option to, like I said, to make your prints because then we can like duplicate sounds, we can pan them out. Uh, we also have the option to do the effects remapping, but I think we're in pretty good shape now. At this stage, we only really have a couple other elements in. There's an effect and there's a, maybe a couple other straggling vocals, which I'm not sure if they got included in a print track or anything like that. Uh, specifically, I am looking at these ones right over here. And I think it's just a stereo pair. So I wanna take a quick look at these, but at this stage, I think just making sure that we're matching the punch and making sure that our EQ is the same. Now we cannot apply mix bus processing in an Atmos domain. So it will definitely be on a case by case basis. We might just be brightening up drums and percussion and or just the vocal and making sure that everything sits well against each other. So we'll catch you for more in the next video.